Hey guys, my name is Kirsty and welcome to my first ever video where I recommend different types of books to you. Today I am going to be talking about all of my recommended contemporary books. If this video seems rushed, that's because it is, because I have my Dutch family coming over in about a hour. An hour. And I thought, you know what, I'm gonna quickly film a video. I need to clean my room still, still haven't done that. Yeah, that's why this video, it might sound a little bit rushed. But all of the books I'm gonna talk about today are contemporaries, obviously, because of it, the video is called Recommended Contemporaries. And these books are just absolutely amazing. They captured my attention, they were riveting. The characters were brilliant. Without any further ado, let's just get into my recommended contemporaries. So first book I'm gonna talk about is The Hate You Give by Angie Thomas. I know you guys were expecting this one. I know this is no surprise, but this had to be on my list. And if you don't know what The Hate You Give is about, where have you been? The Hate You Give is about a young black girl who witnesses her friend get shot by a police officer and it's about her coming to terms with this and kind of like the personal journey that she goes on as a young black girl who is amidst kind of gang wars and the police brutality that happens in America and it's just so just moving and I absolutely loved every single word of this book and it's just so important in today's society. It's just a brilliant story and I cannot wait for the movie to come out. It's gonna be so good. Next up we have When Dimple Met Rishi by Sandy Menon. And this is about a young girl called Dimple and she wants to go off to a kind of computer training school, I guess, in the summer and she's like, oh my God, I'm so excited. And then there's this guy called Rishi, and he has been arranged to marry Dimple, but Dimple doesn't know this. So when Rishi goes to the computer teaching program in the summer to talk to Dimple and meet her, Dimple isn't very impressed. She's like, why wasn't I told that I was in an arranged marriage? Why don't people tell me anything? I don't want to be in an arranged marriage. And it's about Dimple coming to terms with her religion and her beliefs this kind of relationship that she strikes up with Rishi and this is told in a really really good way because it's dual perspective so one moment you go from Dimple one moment you go to Rishi in between the dual perspectives you don't have like big time jumps so if Dimple's like the perspective and then it goes on to Rishi Rishi's is like the exact second after and I just found it absolutely amazing, cute, it's absolutely adorable, it's heartwarming and it's just, oh god, it's just so, so good. Next we have It Only Happens in the Movies by Holly Bourne and this is about a girl called Audrey and she's just fed up of relationships, like she's just done with them and she's getting over this breakup and it's just completely put her off love I guess and so she starts working in a cinema where she meets this guy called Harry and they kind of strike up this friendship and it turns into a relationship and it's just absolutely amazing because our main character Audrey she is kind of like a feminist and she's just like you know what why are, why do movies depict relationships in such an unrealistic way like relationships are not like the movies so it's full of brilliant rom-com references and it's just cute and hilarious then we have night owls by jen bennett and in america i think this is called the anatomical shape of the heart and this is about a young girl and she loves to draw anatomical drawings so you know the drawings that you see in like the science textbooks of like you've got a hand and then you see like the muscles and the bones 
like beneath the skin. Mm. She loves drawing stuff like that. And one day she meets this guy and it turns out that he is a renowned graffiti artist. Mm. It's a contemporary, so you guys know what happened. Mm. They meet and they start to have feelings for each mm. other. And what I loved the most about this book was this artsy vibe to it. I love books that have characters in them that love mm. art because I'm a massive art lover and I just, I don't know, I just love it when we have main characters that love to draw or paint mm. or anything like that, anything artistic and creative I love reading about. Next we have A Quiet Kind of Thunder by Sarah Bernard. This is Sarah Bernard's second book. Her first book was A Beautiful Broken Things which kind of focused more on um, friendships than relationships but there is kind of a couple of problematic areas within that book but we are not talking about beautiful broken things we are talking about a quiet kind of thunder so this was the second book that Sarah Bernard has ever written and this is about a mute character called Steffi and she doesn't talk she doesn't like talking she has major major social anxiety and then there's this boy called reese and he's deaf so we have a character with major social anxiety and we have a deaf main character and these two people they meet each other and they kind of feel like they're the perfect match because one doesn't talk and one can't hear and it's all about steffi learning sign language and communicating with reese and obviously again because it's a contemporary they start to develop feelings for each other and even though one doesn't talk and one can't hear they just understand each other so perfectly and it's such a beautiful story and Sarah Bernard's writing just grew so much better from Beautiful Broken Things and she does actually have a new book out called Goodbye Perfect which I've got, I just haven't read yet so I'm very excited to read that one as well. Next up we have two books by the same author and that is Simon vs the Homo Sapiens Agenda and The Upside of Unrequited by Becky Albertalli. These two books I know that they are all over booktube and they are all over the book blogging community and I know that you guys are probably sick of hearing about them but there is good reason why they are everywhere and that is because they are so so good. So first off we have Silent Verses and it is about a gay main character who is trying to deal with his sexuality, he doesn't want to come out to his parents, no one at school knows he's gay and he starts talking to this online person called Blue and he starts to have feelings for Blue and all of a sudden the whole school knows that Simon's gay and he's like what? Like I didn't tell anyone what's happened, who found out and it's about him dealing with him coming out and he's like you know what I need to come out on my own terms not just because someone spread it and it's a beautiful beautiful journey and the film is just going to be fantastic this is a brilliant book if you haven't read it already definitely get around to it and the upside of unrequited is a book about this girl called molly and she she has had countless amounts of crushes on guys and she just doesn't like to approach the guys and tell them how she feels she likes to keep the feelings inside and not to say anything and just crush from afar and molly has this sister called cassie who is bisexual and Cassie's new girlfriend brings along this very cute guy and Molly's like, oh, he's very cute and nice and she gets to know him and she starts to really like him but there's another guy. She works at this store and there is a guy who works at this store with her called Reed and he's got this awkward Tolkien, massive geek. And so now she's got two crushes and she's like, okay, what do I do? Like, do I tell them? Do I not? And it's just this beautiful story about her kind of breaking out of her shell and kind of voicing her feelings. It's about her relationship with her sister and it is a beautiful, beautiful book in true Becky Albertalli style. Next we have Holding Up the Universe by Jennifer Niven. Jennifer Niven is also the author of All the Bright Places, which I wasn't a massive fan of. I gave it a 3 out of 5 stars, but this I gave a 5 out of 5. It is so much better than All the Bright Places, in my opinion. It is about a girl and she is America's fattest teen or something like that and she's decided that she wants to go to high school um she's sick of staying in bed 
um, and she just wants to kind of get out into the world. So Libby goes to high school and she tries to ignore all the laughter, she tries to ignore all the looks and the bullying that she gets. Um, and she meets this guy called Jack and they strike up this friendship and again in true contemporary style they start to develop feelings for each other and it's about Libby coming to terms with herself and Jack trying to help Libby through the hard times that she's going through. The character of Jack, he suffers with a, I can't, I generally can't remember what the term is, but he basically can't recognise faces. And it was such a big learning experience for me because I've never heard of that mental illness before. It was really educational to learn about it and it was just completely heartbreaking, heartwarming, everything that you could want in this book and it is fantastic. The next book I'm going to talk about is Paper Butterflies by Lisa Heathfield and this kind of deals with child abuse so trigger warnings for that because it is there is quite a lot of it throughout this book but it is about our main character called June and she is being abused by her stepmother. She just feels like she can't break free of this abuse. She just wants to run away and never go back home. She leaves the house one day and she comes across this guy called Blister and she meets Blister in the woods and they start to talk and June doesn't want to tell Blister what she's going through at home. But all Blister knows is that she doesn't want to be at home and that she just wants to kind of get away as much as possible so they start talking the biggest part of this book isn't really about the relationship or the friendship between these two characters it's mainly about june trying to break free and to try and confront what is happening at home and it's such a beautiful story and i cried throughout it because it is so emotional this will probably be one of my top five books of all time because it was such a beautifully written poignant novel and it is one of lisa heathfield's best novels that she has ever written and the last books that i am going to talk about are actually a trilogy and that is am i normal yet by holly bourne how hard can love be and what's a girl gonna do and obviously they're all by Holly Bourne and these are books that deal with feminism mental illness eating disorders and it is just absolutely fantastic my best friend told me about am I normal yet because she was reading it and she said that I would really enjoy it so I borrowed it off her and I fell in love straight away because I was going through the exact same thing that our main character in Am I Normal Yet was going through. It's about these three girls and they are obviously best friends with each other and they're just done with boys and they want to teach the world about feminism. They start their own little spinster club where they talk about feminism and oh, it's just so, so good. And in each book we follow one of the three girls. So in Am I Normal Yet? We follow Evie as she deals with her depression, her medication. In How Hard Can Love Be? We follow Amber as she is trying to get through why her mum abandoned her and she doesn't feel loved or anything. So she goes to America for a kind of Camp America trip and she ends up meeting her mom. And then in What's a Girl Gotta Do, this is about Lottie and we follow her as she tries to start like a feminist revolution and rude, there's a plane, sorry. And we follow Lottie throughout What's a Girl Gotta Do as she tries to start a feminist revolution and she wants to teach everybody, absolutely everybody, about feminism and why girls are so repressed within society and she wants to teach people about the patriarch and it is so good, I absolutely love this one. I think my favourite ones are the first and third ones. I did like How Hard Can Love Be but it wasn't my favourite but altogether this series is just one of the best things I have ever read in my entire life. I absolutely love Holly Bourne's writing and I just love how she always brings in a feminist twist to her books. 
And that's it, those are my recommended contemporary books. I'm sure there are so many more, like, I don't know, Letters to Eloise by Emily Williams, Rafferty Lincoln Loves by Emily Williams. I'm sure there are so, so many, but there's just, there's too many to get through. And like I said, I'm in a rush. And this video is 25 minutes already and, ah, okay. So, if you liked this video, please give it a big thumbs up. If you've got any comments, questions, feedback, leave it in the comments box below. I do have reviews for most of these books, so I will leave a link to those in the description box below. What contemporary books do you love? Let me know, because I'm always, always looking for new contemporary books to read, as I absolutely love them. I post videos on Tuesdays and Fridays, and my reading vlogs are posted on Mondays so if you want notifications for when those videos go up just click on the bell icon below so that's all I've got left to say so thank you guys for watching and I will see you in my next video bye